Hi, this is Jay Rodman, and I'm going to make an attempt to play all the way through the uh, Access Software classic Raid Over Moscow. I don't think this was their breakout success. I think Beachhead uh, came a little earlier and much the same theme, a war-themed uh, game with a lot of different mini games. But I feel like this was really the one that hit out of the park. Um, the general context here is... Uh, there's a, this is the demo. There's a Cold War situation. This was made in 1984, which was kind of late-ish in the Cold War, but still loomed large in our minds, and a uh, threat of nuclear war kind of was lying around in the news. Politicians talked about it. Whatever. Um, the scenario here is somehow there was a treaty signed. Wow, that's so loud. There's a treaty. Let's, uh, I'm trying to get back out of the uh, auto. Oh, is this me actually playing? <laughs> anyway, I guess I'll start playing. There was a treaty signed where the uh, Soviets and... They were still Soviets then. The United States all agreed to disarm and disarmed all their missiles. They kept the Soviets because they're the evil empire, of course, didn't. Uh, they kept some in reserve and some... Um, Military instability happens in Saudi Arabia, and the Soviets launch their missiles as their dastardly way to demand the U.S. Uh, leave the region. So launching nukes to de-escalate. I don't, I don't know, not very po terribly believable political story. Oh, oh, but, um... Uh, I guess it was it was a popular theme of the time, kind of well chosen. Uh, there's some famous uh, political s kerfuffle that happened in Finland as a result because they were much more in the Soviet sphere of influence, but yet were buying Western goods. Um, and well, I don't know. Soviet sphere of influence is really fair with Finns, but whatever. They were neighbors, and the Kremlin had some sway there, and there was. Um, a bunch of political wrangling over whether this should be allowed to be sold, which um, resulted in this game selling very well because of the news about it. Okay, anyway, so the mechanics of uh, the, the, the storyline is this m particular city has launched nukes. Uh, Leningrad has launched, of course, now St. Petersburg, has launched nukes at Chicago, and somehow... If we go to Leningrad and blow up their missile silo, that will stop the nukes from exploding. I don't know how that makes any sense. Um, but that's what we're doing. So um, I didn't explain the last section. I guess I'll explain it uh, next time around because this game, for better or worse, includes a fair amount of repetition. So this section um, is joystick controlled. It's all joystick controlled. We have left for turning the plane left and right for turning the plane right, which are up and down on the screen. And if I pull back on the joystick, we raise an elevation and uh, push forward, we lower an elevation. If we're ever over 15 meters and one of those missiles comes by, it hits us, so you gotta keep staying low. It's fairly straightforward once you memorize it. This section, all we have to do is shoot the middle silo thing. I don't know if that's a silo, whatever. It's, I think it's supposed to be the command center, but um, I never do that because there are more points to be had if we shoot the other ones. Strangely, there's the system where your plane turns blue if you're at the right height and distance. It's kind of um, a necessary uh, I don't know what the, the word I'm looking for here. They have to make it easier for you to figure out how high you are because you can't see anything because, you know, it's not really a 3D game. Or rather, you know, like, there's no, there's nothing that strongly tells you if you're as high as the target. It's just the limitation of the technology of the time. So you turn blue when you're on target. Okay, so now uh, Minsk has launched missiles at Dallas. I, I'm not going to comment on... Um, I keep... Trying to adjust the window that's behind this window and bringing it in the front. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to comment about my prejudices about various American cities. They're, they're really just an ugly reflection of my personality in any event.
So uh, I, you can, um, let's talk about what I'm doing. I did a little tutorial video about this, but who knows if you watched it. Uh, probably the same people wouldn't watch both. You start off facing the wrong way, uh, heading towards the wall. If you let yourself go over there, you'll, you'll hit the wall and explode. You turn around, thrust forward to get face, move the right way. You have to press this, the fire button to lift off, and you have to press F7 to open the hangar doors. A game in desperately need of multiple buttons, I would say. The Commodore and the Amiga both suffered greatly. I would say also the Atari computer suffered greatly from their single button controller in terms of game control scheme sophistication. RPGs, which are my favorite, were fine because they have a whole keyboard there, but um, whole classes of reasonable game input schemes were not available. Anyway, so I got I did that three times because I wanted to take out three planes. Um, when I take out three planes, you can see the two of them parked there next to the space station. Uh, they're actually supposedly flying with me. I don't know why they don't just make a group of dots. Whatever, they ran out of time programming. I don't know. Uh, so... That's the number of lives you're gonna have. So if I'm flying through this section and I get shot down, that's a, I've lost a plane. And if I lose more planes than the ones I took out from the hangar, I will have to go all the way back to the space station and take out more planes. And this may sound like Tedium. Like, why would they bother to implement that? But look, we have a time to impact of uh, 5 minutes, 56 seconds. I don't know how that's realistic for a missile going across the continents, but I don't actually know how long that takes. Um, so if we, if we fail to do it in time, which on beginner, it's kind of hard to fail without having your planes all blow up. But on the harder levels, it's more possible. Uh, anyway, if we fail to meet the time... We lose a city, and the game continues. You know, no, no time to weep. Um, so, I don't know if you lose points or what. It just always seemed like, you know, kind of a bad thing to me to have Chicago or Dallas nuked. And when I was learning to play the first time, I was sort of depressed when I would see Miami removed from the map so we've blown up two missile silos um and uh we have one more and then the game changes Hmm. May have run out of things to say. Well, um, so far this has been much smoother than I anticipated. I guess I did a couple practice runs. Um, and I played it a lot in my formative years. I guess you must have acquired this game. I think I bought it with my allowance money or something like that. As like a present for my brother. Which is kind of like a you know, a gift you give to yourself, but he liked it a lot. I don't know if he liked it as much as me. Uh, maybe we went in together. I don't remember. Some, But somehow I contributed in some, you know, lawns mowing, you know, gutter cleaning way to buying this game in uh, some large electronic store. I don't even remember the name of that place. They had all kinds of things. That's where we bought our Speak and Spell <clears throat> and other gizmos near King of Prussia Mall, once the largest mall in the world. I think it has been unseated several times since then. And my interest in malls has waned quite a lot since then. The magic number for not getting shot by... Ooh. Well, there you can see the plane explode. Good thing I included that. The magic number for getting shot by the missiles is 15 meters. I, would, I will say, though, I don't know what this, you know, heathen meters number is doing in a god-fearing American game. 
In, in case any of you are not clear, that was a dumb joke. <laughs> I, I do not want to hear about how the US system of measurements is stupid unless it's very entertaining. I mean, I'm not going to argue with you, it is kind of stupid. But less stupid than what came before it, I will tell you that. It's just a failure to continue to accept new and better systems when they came along. And a bunch of silly politics that happened in that period, time period. Although I don't know why we don't fix it now. Anyway, um, I hope I didn't start a big argument about that, because that would be very boring. Um, so I don't remember what Soviet city or Russian city, depending on your point of view and the time scale you're imagining that we're talking about. Um, I'm bombing now. Very poorly. I think we got Minsk and Leningrad. No, we're doing Leningrad now? I don't remember. Saratov, there we go. And at this point, all of our planes magically come down to us. We've gotten them all, they, they've all come out of the space hangar for some reason. Um, or by some mechanism that is off, not shown. And we will never have to do the space hangar again. This section, we're repeating one last time. I think I used to get really focused on maximizing my score here. I would try different routes and add up the numbers, but... Oops. That's embarrassing. But, um... You know, it... It re like, I don't have any idea why I should care about a number that is assigned to this playthrough. I suppose if you had, like, several people in a house, and you might compete to see if you get the bigger number, I guess. Especially if it saves the high scores for the floppy disk, which I have no idea if it does. I do not recall. This helicopter is weird. Like, sometimes you can shoot it and sometimes you can't. I do not know what the deal is. Okay, so, now we are on to a new segment. The Raid on Moscow. I guess we already were sort of embarking on that. We get this little man in a bazooka. And pushing up and down changes the trajectory of how high he will fire. You can blow off pieces of the building, which is supposed to be like a nuclear something center, but clearly it's the uh, Russian His Museum of History, I think. Actually, I don't know my, you know, Red Square slash Moscow geography very well, but this is um, not a nuclear research facility. It is a famous historic building, which we are defacing because of course, this is, this just fits the whole mood of this game, uh, that of kind of defacing uh, Russian property in a nose-thumbing exercise against the evil empire. It was, it's hard for me to sort of like wrap my head around the idea that the president of the United States once in speeches would actually, I guess we're that back there again. I don't know. It's like we our, our our executive leader would talk about them the uh, the Soviet Union as the evil empire in a serious tone of voice. It sounded like some part of Star Wars. Anyway, so to to solve this screen, I've shown you some of the things you can do that you don't actually have to do. Um, that is, knock various bits off buildings. Those are all just bonus points. Oh, I have the wrong height. You need to knock all the little men's, little nans, uh, off the walls. And you have to remove the tank. And you must find the door that is white. So those red doors were like, uh, nope experiences. They were, you got the wrong one experiences. You simply have to find the one that is white. Because racism. No, because, I don't know. Nuclear reactors are colored white. 
they do replenish. So after you've finished removing them all, some may come back, like that one over there. I've made this look trivially easy, but um, it's... I don't know if it's, there's a really so much of a challenge. It's a little capricious. If you stay in one spot, the tank will definitely shoot you. If you don't move very much, the men will tend to shoot you. So it's kind of how quickly you do it and your movement patterns. Okay, this part I'm terrible at. And truth be told, depending upon how it goes, I may well edit it. I may edit it with success. So this is supposedly a robot who is in this is this is the nuclear reactor we're standing in front of and um I, <laughs> I don't know what to say so um this is a nuclear reactor and uh there's a robot here who is injecting coolant because you know you wouldn't want to do that with like a pipe system or anything like that uh so he hovers around injecting coolant into into these um, fuel cells or whatever. Imagine there are fuel rods of uranium in each one of those little squares. I am th th this this is where like the whole perspective problem where you can't really tell how things are working in 3D really comes home to roost. Anyway, he's got armor on his front is what they tell us in the manual. So we have to bounce these discs off the far wall to hit him on his back. This feels like someone wrote a game routine for some totally unrelated game and um, they just kind of wedged it on in there. So this is the angry robot. Oh, I hit him on the face rather than on the back. That is the worst. Uh, so they have a replacement robot for our first robot. And the replacement robot, um spends insufficient time refilling the reactor. And the net result of this is um, the reactor heats up. As we all know, uh, reactors that go without their required amount of coolant go into gigantic explosions. I mean melt I mean gigantic explosions because this is a video game. And um, that countdown on the right is how long it will take for the explosion to begin. But if we manage to take out the robot quickly enough, uh, we can escape in our 30 remaining seconds. <laughs> we manage to find our planes, take off, and get out of the city before a large portion of it explodes. And um, that's our militaristic uh, dream of teenage military conquest uh, um, revealed or complete uh, I don't know not revealed um, realized I, I'm, I'm joking I mean I don't I don't hate this game and I don't hate the nonsense of the nonsense it represents it's amusing to me and I think it's a kind of a great work but it is of its time and it is a little over the top. Anyway, uh, see you next game.